North Dakota 2022. Joey just pulled up. We have a 10 hour drive tonight. He's got a mule deer tag. I'm going to film the entire thing. Not hunting unless he shoots early then I'll buy a white tail tag. So Joey, it's all you, let's go say hi. It's all Hispanic friend, how are you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad, that's good. Does that mean we're ready? North Dakota 2022, let's go. Yeah, watch my car get blocked because I didn't set up a travel plan. I never do. I've never had issues. Yeah, 45 minutes, I think. Sleep for like three hours and then just scout recon day. I think so. Smoke a deer on the way there. Bunch of them. Probably oh, good. Our wind is terrible right now because it's blowing right at them. Go on to the back. Close to a shooter. For real, dude? Yeah, he's a little guy. Any bucks? He's so excited, dude. Just had to get the first one out of the way? Yeah. That's right. I think what I was doing was I was torquing my bow too hard. I kind of twitched my hand a little bit. Okay. <laughs> oh, that one's gonna be bad too. Holy moly, dude. Mm. All right, let's get after it. Don't post this.
I was gonna say, dude, we're about a we're about a mile away. There's no way in hell up deer looking at us. Never mind. There's more than six. There's like freaking <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it up. One, two. There's a spike in there. One, two, three. And my stupid thing doesn't have a cup measurement, so I just had to eyeball off at 12 ounces. Yeah, the little one on the bottom right looks like a white tail, the way it's rack shaped. But yeah, the one on the top right is probably the biggest of the four. No, this one I got eyes on too. Top right, and then top left, and then bottom left, and then bottom right. Dude, they're working their way back. You feel it, Joey? I'm terrified. So what's the game plan? We got on box? You gonna make your first dog? It's the first practice dog. You gotta fuck something. Sorry. You gotta mess something up to uh can't learn anything without making mistakes, so sorry to anybody that lives in the area, but we're just getting your deer smarter. <laughs> so negative, dude. Sorry, I have a 70 millimeter lens on, so it's not gonna focus on me. But we just got out of the truck, we were on deer. We popped over the hill and there's four more bucks. I don't think they're the same bucks. They're not the same bucks. Just because these ones look a lot smaller, but we're on deer and Joey's comfortable taking whatever. He's never spot and stalked. I don't even know the last time he shot a deer with his bow. Come on, focus, I can't. I got such a big lens on, so. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mess him up, homie. Mess him up. Don't want him to keep going up the draw, you know, and then they cut across. He's what? Wait, what? He's coming our way.
guess they're that way. Okay. So, Joey went on his first mule deer stock. And this one threw me for a loop, actually. It's kind of a mystery. What about it? Well, the fact that oh, we we watched those deer go into the cut. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Smells good. We made a game plan, and we're like, we can see above the patch of trees. There was only like an 80-yard section we couldn't see that the deer walked into. So we're like, okay, done deal. The deer have to be there. We make this stalk, and it took us probably 10 minutes from the time we were up top to the time that Joey drew back. It was probably 10 minutes. And he saw two deer, so he drew back and stood up. Well, it was a doe and a fork. But by the time he stood up, drawn back, they were gone. And we had never seen anything run away. And the other deer were nowhere to be found, so that's what's throwing me for a loop. Yeah. <laughs> Joey's like, another day, another beer. Blind squirrel finds nuts every once in a while, and this squirrel's got a trip to the optometrist. Then we, we found some more deer in a bigger buck that we ended up kicking up just over the hill. So we're going to try and just blast from a distance. The wind sucks right now. It's out of the north-northeast. So. <laughs> She's gonna be windy. getting closing the gap just like this well, that's just it. it's like now my mind is like I'm okay with ho hopefully trying to I don't want to say waste time but spend time learning new areas just so you have another option yeah but like two days from now I guarantee I'm gonna be like okay we have a spot with deer let's hit it hard yep yep and I have a feeling it's gonna be that plot piece that we've been starting on that piece just south of your tooth that looks exactly the same seriously I don't well, we now have an update. We didn't film anything yesterday night. We were just driving roads. We did see another 50 to 100 deer and some different bucks. And we slept last night, it was night two in camp. And if you see now by the window by Joey, it's 6 a.m. and we're inside the truck. And I'll just give you a little tour of what we got going on. So, our tent, okay, get this outside, is somewhere over there. All our stuff is wet. Our tiny tent we bought is fucked. Everything's fucked. It doesn't show signs of stopping.
Show me your speed. Dude, that is a wicked nice clock though. I wish my stupid iPhone, every time I look through my lens, it never did that before. But now every time I try and look through my lens, my, my binoculars with my camera, it starts switching lenses. Well, we finally got sunlight. Joey and I are watching three bucks. Life is good. Two for sure. There's a third and fourth deer unconfirmed from 1.2 miles away, I think is what we found on Onyx. We do not have time to get there tonight, but if all goes well, and somehow they're still there in the morning, we're gonna get on them. So that's my update. That's probably it for the night, but we're gonna go check and see if we could probably walk this draw down tomorrow morning. Today is the day. Today is the day. Very confident. The blackest coffee I've ever had in my life. It's like drinking used motor oil. Thanks Cowboy Duncan coffee. Dunn. Huh? Cowboy coffee. That's about all you can get out of it. Yeah, we put some bucks to bed last night. Hopefully. And so far, everything is going to plan. They could all go to hell in the last, like, in the first hour of daylight. Which it probably will. It probably will. Nothing's, but nothing's gone right yet. We were on deer. Some decent bucks. What do you think? And we're, yeah, I figured probably one of the ones all busted up. So he's has the potential class of 120s, I think. So we're going to send it. Snow still on the ground. It's cold as hell. Welcome to the West. This morning got back on the bucks that we saw the other night but they have about 30 does with them this time which is something we've seen not at all so that's a little bit different there's a whole lot of eyeballs around them um, I don't know probably about another 500 600 yards until we start to get into a spot where we should probably have an arrow knocked but I hate to say it but our main goal right now is to find somewhere with service because we forgot to call and book our room again for another night and all our stuff's still in there. <laughs> so, I'm hoping she doesn't steal like thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Lost and found. Yeah, lost and found. Um, just working our way up this creek bottom. It's pretty gnarly. And it's just warm enough for all the snow once you get on the grease. It just whoosh, gives her right another.
absolutely crazy. We're stalking this hill. I went on this bed back here and Joey has started pulling back and I looked and there was a fawn up the hill like 80 yards. So we crouched down. That fawn came above us and I, she sat in front of me at like 45 and I'm trying to get the binox up and I'm telling you that she's through the bush and I hear a grunt. I hear a little baby rat and I look over and the freaking two fawns are at like 15 yards running at me. I'm like holy cow. <laughs> But they ran that way, which is good. So the bugs are still in front of us somewhere. We're gonna kick them up soon and hopefully get a shot. That is the longest and most intense stalk I've ever been on, and we got so close. And the best thing is, we never spooked them, dude. They never do over here. They just walked across that hill, and that hill is private land on the other Chill side. It's a step in the right direction, man. It's only day four. Hey, don't worry about it. Those other bucks in the plots pieces are three times the size, and they'll be back. Oh, yeah. Those guys would get destroyed in a boxing match against those other ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had one small buck with them, but I mean the timber is so thick. Down no. What a decent way to end the morning. I don't feel bad at all. No. That was that was amazing experience. No, that was a good workout. That was a crazy experience. If we got out here freezing our asses off. Now we're sweating our nuts off. I'm not. I'm wearing good high quality gear. Also, I've seen other people get sponsors for way less followers. Send me something cool, you love your shit. Dude, they would totally go to the left side of the freaking pond. I don't know, I'd assume so. That buck is chasing them. He's still standing there. He's coming up last, isn't he? Maybe not. You want the reach finder?
Oh, he's gonna give you a second shot. Get another arrow. He's gonna come down the left side. I didn't know there was three. Dude, I didn't know that. Which one did you aim at? The monster? Okay, he was 50 for me. I only had my pen at 45. I called a good health and center mass. Yeah, but by the time you shot, he was gone. Oh, really? Maybe it didn't, I don't know. Okay. It is a humble learning experience. Well, not on my end, it's all Denzine's fault. It is, okay, it kind of very well is my fault. <laughs> I, I messed that up and I feel terrible at the moment. All right. So, started, we were gonna call it a day because we put on miles this morning and some really, really rough stuff. Chase bucks got within 100 yards and then they just they trounced right onto private land. We glassed some fawns and just a really tight like thorn apple or hawthorn or whatever those are, just a thicket. And uh, lo and behold, we're looking way out and then Denzine says, or Gabe says, oh, there they are. And what are we ranged at, like 110 yards? But yeah. Uh, six white tails, all does, and a couple fawns came out on a, on a dike and I, I don't know what happened. We had our shadows covered. We had stuff behind us to the side of us. Our wind was in our face heavy. And they just, they looked up at us and just hightailed it. So we stayed there and watched down into a, a little flat right before our creek bottom where there's more of the thicket there. Yeah, literally that right there. Yeah, right there. That right below us. Um, and all of a sudden it just like someone just turned a switch and there was it's it's like where every buck in the county is popped out through a time portal i mean they just were just piling i mean there was there was little 110 dinky little fort white tails there was 110 because we were staying like oh man that's a nice buck for north dakota yeah. and then we were humbled really fast when like a 140 150 came out nose to the ground up and down chasing the, up and down the creek bottom just running back and forth on everything we could disappeared after we had seen some buku bucks big 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 mules come out of the same thicket they're running 20 yards apart from each other dude they were literally all in the same bowl it, it, right here it looked like a vietnamese intersection with all the deer running through there and the whitetail pushed his does towards they, they ran right into our setting originally and uh just decided to say screw it and got really aggressive and closed probably about 400 yards in about 20 minutes it wasn't even that long dude i don't know watched him got eyes on the white tails again and they they took off ran past us gave up on them i wanted to go for the muleys because they had just they had disappeared down there they literally walked up from down there is where we lost them and we were thinking they're gonna come up to this hillside right here next to us on this flat because it's shaded so we just kept pushing on this way so we pushed like another 15 yards out of a thicket little i don't know scrub oak draw or whatever that is and I look through just a little two foot wide slot. I mean, it's like the only line of sight. And there's that little forker whitetail. And I think there was a doe behind him. So I told Denzine to get down and that was the first one you'll probably see. And then I sat, I sat there for about 10, 15 seconds, came back up to see if they were still coming. And 
it's it's like they just like walked through like a warp. There was three. Literally right here in this three, open area. Like picture perfect, chocolatey brown, just like studded up. They they look like beef cattle, mule deer. And I I, I ducked down and Denzine had my rangefinder because we were sitting together up there, and. I figured he could see it, but now that I look at the lay of the land, there's a slight rise here. And I said, range him, range him, range him. And he ranged 50 and my pin was at 45 and I, I, I would have been fine. If I held center mass, I probably would have hit like just about perfect with his heart. Uh, just like just where the arm meets. And I, I popped up full draw. And the, the first one in line, there was three of them. I saw two. Denzine saw one. When I came up and shot, I saw the third one. The third one was smaller. Denzine couldn't see the second one. So Gabe shot Gabe shot with the rangefinder the first one. That was 50 from him and probably even further. It's probably about 60 from you. Probably about 60 from me. Which I don't know, man. Better. That's I don't know. I don't know, because it, it's a different angle too. So And I, I just popped up and I don't know what, I don't know what happened, man. I don't know how I didn't see that that was less. Cause now that I've set my bow where I was and walked to where you can see his tracks turn, it's 35 yards. And it, and it went just right over his back. If I had been holding for his heart, it would have been a high long shot. So, and then Denzine says, oh man, he's giving you another shot, another shot. And they're, they're skylined right here. And I'm staring right in the sun, so I wouldn't have been able to shoot anyway. I would have had two marks against me. So, feeling not too great, but I mean, I guess the excitement was. So like the weird thing was with this story is like, the communication we never expected we needed. Like the worst thing was is him and I kind of got split up. He was eight to 10 yards down the, maybe not that far, down the hill from me. So we were spread out. I had his range finder because we were supposed to you know, him focus on shooting, I give him the distance. I never saw the deer until I stood up to range. He had seen the deer, told me to sit down. And then as he told me to range, I stood up and I saw what looked to be like a freaking elk. Mondo, dude. And I ranged twice, I got 51, 50, and he was still walking. So then I looked over and saw Joey had drawn back and then stood up. So I lifted the camera width and stayed on that deer and that deer stood up and started running and as that deer was running I heard And I'm like what the heck he just shot at a moving deer But so apparently not I was like what happened I did not see it until after that deer had run up this hill behind me That there was two more deer which I biffed on the film jog because we were just in the moment um so I ranged a different deer that he didn't even shoot at. So I messed that part up because the deer that he shot at was probably only 35 yards away and I told him 50. So we just sent it over its back. So I biffed the communication on that and I... What are you gonna do? I don't know, because I'm like, if I would have stood up, I feel like I would have, they all would have spooked. You would have been right in their line of sight. You did what you thought was best. What are you gonna do? Guess Joey's buying a Garmin next time. No, no, no. You're bringing your own rangefinder, so I can keep my own with me. Finder. We have the same damn rangefinder. Okay. All right, we're going to look for his arrow because he shot somewhere into the snow here. And then if you look at his arrow, well, he doesn't have his bow. He's got white arrows. Yeah, I have the, the same model arrows in black. And I was like, oh, you know what? Those might be kind of hard to find in the black dirt or whatever. So I'm like, well, I'll, I'll get the same arrows. I was, gonna, I was just going to buy more arrows. I'm like, oh, man, they got, they got white ones. Like those would be nice and easy to find. It'd be nice and easy to see like blood on them. Uh, two days in, we got four inches of snow on the ground. So that backfired. He's a monster. Please get that buck on the horizon. That's the buck I shot at. That's the buck right there. Oh, there's the other one. Oh my Christ. Dude, they're running on the public. That's wide open field right now. There's, uh. No. That's the one. That's the one right there with the big split main being on the right side. They just hop the road. See him? Yeah, there's three, four bucks out there. I don't know if those are the same ones or not. This one's a dink. One's a toad. 
No, the one I'm looking at doesn't look huge either. Or maybe it's because they're 9,000 yards away. Oh yeah, that's them. Look at them go. Those are good blocks, dude. Very decent blocks. Why is this the third one? You think the one that's to the right? Uh, I I don't even know anymore, dude. Wednesday morning and we got out here just like five minutes late and literally where we parked the truck last night after we had the, the, those encounter with those bucks there was four bucks standing on the road in front of the truck like 60 yards and they slowly just walked into the draws that we were gonna hunt so we're letting them just slowly get down Joey and I are gonna get dressed and we're gonna haul butt I think like the first hundred yards on top and then peak draws and just slowly keep eyes because they're moving upwind which is great so we're going to be behind them and if we can get to a spot where we can actually hide on the top and get in front of them and cut them off we're going to do that and hopefully just make short work of this thing okay we just watched one of the bucks come down out of this draw and up over the hill just towards that tower so he's about 150 yards in front of us walking slowly he's not a mondo but he's about 140 probably we're getting him 134 by 4. He's nice and tall. And he's got enough width. He's nowhere near. He's about half the size of the bucks we saw last night. Which is even crazy to say. Joey and I are strategically picking this place apart. It's gonna be fun. Alright, we're on deer. We just watched a limpy buck and three does go across this cut right here where Joey shot last night. And then there's no other deer in this valley. So we'll walk just 50 yards to the other side of this plateau and saw there was the two hunters from last night. We're like 80 yards, 100 yards in front of us. And then we walked back over the side and we got on our bucks. Three nice, I don't know if they're the same big bucks from last night. One's a toad, two are nice, and there's two does with them. And we got eyes on them going in. Those bucks are... <laughs> Update. So, we start chasing these deer, and we get to this grassy dude, and these deer are probably 300 yards, just that way. And Joey crossed just around, and he walked out, and there's two guys 25 yards away from him glassing, so we didn't talk to him, but... Uh, yeah, that sucks. We're just gonna let these guys hunt, I guess. The original goal was to get to that point right there. That's we were glassing that this morning and all those bucks and the deer we saw the night before was just on the other side of this ridge here. That way. Now Joey and I had to take a new entrance today. And on Onyx it looked pretty good, but right below us we have about a three hundred foot drop. All this will have to scare this and scale this hill. Joel and I have decided tonight that we have failed absolutely big time. 
We seem to have a knack for kicking deer away from us, which sucks. In the last spot we expect them, we kicked up a three-legged deer, and we're like, man, what could be easier than hunting down a three-legged deer? He was a night. He was a little smaller, four by four, but I mean, he was still nice. He's probably 120, and we saw him disappear in a creek bottom, full of brush. We're like, oh man, he's still got to be there, because deer have just bedded down all day with this warm weather, and they haven't moved an inch. And we played the wind. We got about halfway, waiting for a wind change, so we weren't blowing everything around. And I said, hey, there's a doe. And this plateau behind us, it looks level from where that one right there, where we are, but where we were, it was basically looking straight up and he was up top skylined. I mean, I'll admit I'm a rookie. This is my first time. Jesus Christ. It's been rough. So we got a long walk down and up a giant hill back to the truck. We're hoping to get there while it's still daylight and then we can check a field and some cuts close to the road just in case there's us 15 minutes to get there I'm not there in case there's any deer left here I have no idea we saw all the deer they're right next to the railroad tracks as far away as possible so. It's like does. They're not the real The ones down below, the ones crossing over. Yeah, that's them. We're giving up on the spot. We sat here until just about 11.30 and haven't seen deer, other hunters. There's cowboys, other guys. Deer disappeared. It's probably the last day we're heading back north and just hoping to shoot a doe.
Your buck is passing your truck, dude. <laughs> there it is. Legal shooting hours, half hour after sunset, 6.39. We are out of here with tag soup. I love it. It's exactly how I wanted to end this trip. So we ended it with a shot at a really nice deer. Um, it, it happened so fast, we kind of fumbled the ball on it. And tonight we said it was doe day, because I have an any tag for any species. Um, we've seen deer come through here every single night, always does, um, and forkers. And we're like, well, this is going to be the spot. We're just going to have to lay down on our bellies and play the little roll on the hill here. Um, we went and saw some bucks in a new spot for the first time. We saw two magnums across the, across the gulch. And then we spotted some like 110s, 120s or whatever. Parked right there, next to the other guy's truck. Um, they're maybe 100 yards apart. Expecting these deer to come about 50, 60 yards. I'm comfortable with that shot. Uh, and I hear Gabe go, they're right there, they're right there, they're to the right. They uh, just walked between both of our trucks. Um, if I was that way, I could have sat in my driver's seat and shot a nice like 130, 140. So, that's just... Uh, that's it. There's the end of it. Smash that subscribe button and uh, be sure to check out all of Gabe's other uh, media accounts. He's on Facebook and he's got a TikTok and I think he's got an Instagram account too. They're not bad. They kind of suck. A lot of pity follows going on there but yeah, we'll send you on his way.